Hello class, this is Demetrius Wilson again. This is Principles of Management, Chapter 12. Uh, this is uh, Part 2 of the lecture. We're speaking about types of teams. Uh, you have a, a task force, which is a temporary team, uh, which is asked to address a specific issue or problem until it's resolved. So you bring in some people from some different special areas, get them together, and they form a task force to get these things resolved. Uh, product development team can be a temporary or ongoing. A uh, cross-functional team appears in a matrix organization where individuals from different parts of the organization uh, staff of the team, uh, which may be temporary or long-standing in nature. Uh, if you look in matrix organizations, a lot of times you'll see people who have more than one uh, manager, meaning that you report to uh, your regular operations manager, then you also report to a manager that's uh, in charge of that uh, project. Uh, virtual teams, so teams uh, where members are not located in the same physical place. Uh, upward of 8.4 million individuals worldwide work virtually uh, in at least one team. Uh, virtual teams are formed to take advantage of distributed expertise or time. Challenges of virtual teams, building trust is very difficult over the phone, over video chat, over link. Uh, if individuals in a virtual team are not fully engaged and tend uh, to avoid conflict, a uh, team performance can actually suffer. Uh, I actually have more uh, well, actually, it's, it's even now. Uh, I have the same amount of on um, on premise employees that I do of uh, virtual employees. Top management teams, and these are very important to the organization's success. Uh, top management teams are appointed by the chief executive officer or the CEO and ideally reflect the skills and areas uh, that the CEO considers vital to the company. Uh, typical top management uh, member titles include Chief Operating Officer, COO, Chief Financial Officer, CFO, deal with all the financials, uh, Chief Marketing Officer, uh, markets the company appropriately, appropriately and a Chief Technology Officer. Uh, also, you'll see like a CIO, which is the Chief Information Officer. Uh, companies have top management teams uh, to help set the company's vision and strategic direction, uh, key tasks uh, within the planning of POLC function. Uh, the board of directors, which has a lot of power, uh, is an example of an important team in corporations uh, and uh, nonprofit organizations also utilize boards as a key decision making body in such organizations. Roles and teams. So let's. Uh increases so we can check out some roles and teams. So accountant, uh, board members may at times ask for approval or financial objectives. Uh, lawyer, ensuring the firm complies with applicable law is a key role. Advisor, providing advice on strategic issues is a critical role as well. Activist boards must ensure that the rights of in the interests of the stakeholders and especially the stockholders, which are two different things, uh, are represented. Uh, human resource manager boards must monitor the CEO and engage in hiring, firing, and administration of uh, CEO compensation. And then you have uh, agent uh, because uh, <clears throat> board members may serve a powerful positions at other companies. A well-networked board uh, member may be able to bring uh, new connections to the firm. And that is very, very true. Uh, one pretty uh, slick idea that a company that I, I used to work for had is they, they put together a, a board of directors, but they made the board of directors up of the all of the brokers that they had in the broker community. So they made them feel good about... Um, uh, giving input about the business and having it changed right then and there. So of course they brought all of their business. So it was, it was smart uh, on the broker's part, but it was also definitely smart on the company's part as well. Uh, so teams, uh, leadership and, and autonomy. So traditionally managed teams. So I have a traditionally managed team. Leader resides outside the team. Potential for uh, low autonomy, meaning low ability to be empowered and kind of do your own thing. Uh, Self-managed teams. Uh, the team manages itself but still has a leader. Uh, potential for low, uh, medium, or high autonomy just depends on how they run that organization. Uh, Self-directed team. Uh, the team makes all the decisions internally about leadership and how work is done is the potential for uh, high autonomy. Designing effective teams. Uh, so if you don't design an effective team, you won't have one. Uh, team composition. Uh, who are the best individuals for the team? Don't pick who your best friends are. Pick who are the best individuals for the team. Team size. How, how large should my team be? Sometimes, uh, you know, the people get out of the uh, range of scope and they have too many individuals on their team and they can't manage them all.
team diversity, how diverse should my team be? Should it be very diverse? Should it be, you know, somewhat diverse? Should it be not diverse at all? Uh, the ideal size for a team depends on the task at hand. Groups larger than 10 members tend to be harder to uh, coordinate and often break into sub-teams to accomplish the work at hand. Right, so I won at one point in time. In my career had a, a team of, of forty and some change, and I definitely uh, was past the the, the you know the uh, not the allowed but the um, uh, the approved or or knowledgeable or sensible uh, amount of people that you should have reporting to you. Uh, a couple of discussion questions. Uh, think of the last team you were in. Did you, the task you were asked to do affect the team? Why or why not? A lot of you guys will say yes, it did affect the team, and then tell us a little bit, or tell whoever you're speaking to a little bit about, um, you know, how those teams turned out. What did they do? What did you do? How did what you did uh, impact the organization? Uh, team norms and contracts. So norms are shared expectations about how things operate within a group or team. A team contract includes establishing ground rules, goals, and roles. Right? These are the rules. This is what you can do. This is what you can't do. Everyone should adhere to those. Uh, the key to success, successful uh, team design is to have clear norms, right? They're clear, they're not Confucius, uh, roles and expectations among team members, right? So everybody knows what's going on. We know, uh, you know, what to expect uh, from you, from me, and from everybody else. Uh, components of team contracts, team, and value, uh, team values and goals, team roles and leadership, team decision making, team communication expectations, and how uh, team performance is characterized. All right, so these are the components uh, that make up a, a team contract. Uh, meeting process. Uh, so I took actually took a class on how to have effective meetings, and uh, you know a lot of people need to take that class because people just sometimes have meetings just to have meetings when you really don't need a meeting, and all kind of different things. Uh, but um, uh, you really have to be cognizant of that and you really have to know and understand how it impacts you as well as your employees. Uh, so meeting preparation, be sure a meeting is uh, even needed. Create and distribute an agenda. Uh, send a reminder prior to the meeting. Manage the meeting. Uh, start and end the meeting on time, right? Don't be uh, disrespectful of their time. Manage group dynamics for full participation. I need everyone to get involved. And summarize the meeting with action items, right? Uh, so this is what we met about. These are the action items that I'm going to take away, and you know, John, I, I need for you to take uh, take on these few tasks as well. Uh, uh, after the meeting, uh, follow up on the action items, which obviously makes sense. So, in effective meetings, you want to conduct a meeting standing up. I'm not sure if some of you guys have heard this before, uh, but conducting meetings standing up has been shown to save time and keep information flowing across the team. Uh, you know, some individuals are not a fan. Uh, I'm definitely uh, okay with uh, what they call stand-ups or, uh, or standing meetings because it does kind of get you charged and, and get the flow going. If any of you guys have seen like sales, uh, you know, uh, sales movies like uh, Boiler Room um, or anything like that, that you see that when they're talking to the sales people, they tell them to stand up because if you're sitting down, you know, you're talking away, but if you stand up, now you're giving it your all and you're, you're kind of loose and they have the headless uh, uh, head or headless, the wireless headsets, they put them on, they walk around the office and they tell them, you know, you know, the good stuff, but you can, you can kind of feel it. Uh, if you're sitting down, you don't feel it as much. A few more discussion questions. I uh, have the norms for most of the teams that you've belonged to been formal or informal, right? So Formal uh, norm would be that you have to clock in at eight. Informal would be that we're all going to take a, a you know unscheduled break at uh, at, at three thirty and just talk about things within the company. Uh, <clears throat> so just want you guys to ask yourselves those discussion questions. Uh, as always, there'll be barriers to everything: barriers to effective teams, barriers to life, barriers to going co going to college. You guys have all you know hurdled a certain amount of barriers already. Uh, but you want to check out and see what what type of barriers there are to effective teams because it doesn't always just have to. It's not always about you. It could be someone else uh, that that basically needs to change. So knowing where to begin, dominating team members, right? The person who keeps raising their hand. I just want to talk, talk, talk. Why don't you be quiet and let everybody else have a chance to talk and, and lend their opinion? Uh, poor performance of uh, team members, right? So you might have uh, you know some team members that perform uh, not too swell. And then you just, um, you know, uh, either you give them the feedback 
or uh, or maybe they kicked out of the group. I don't know. But uh, poor performance of team members uh, definitely needs to be addressed. Uh, poorly managed team conflict, right? Uh, so I know managers, sometimes conflict goes on. They just sit there and they're quiet and they don't say anything and don't do anything. But you have to uh, get in front of you. You have to kind of embrace the conflict and go from there. Uh, so, discussion questions, have you ever been involved in a team where one or more dominating team members hurts the team performance? I certainly have. Uh, it's hard to get around those people, uh, you know, assign them to the Siberia project and, and send them over there uh, so that um, <clears throat> so that they can kind of uh, be out of the way uh, from uh, from what your group discussion is and you guys can, can see some, uh, so, some progress. Uh, so be, building your cohesive team, establish common objectives, let members choose goals and uh, participate fully, define clear roles and responsibilities, build familiarity through close proximity, right? We're all in a little group. Maybe we set our chairs up uh, or set our cubicles up like in a round or, or straight down a row or something like that. Uh, give frequent praise and validate, right? Validate the people, give them praise when they do well. Uh, treat all members with dignity and respect, right? You don't want to treat people with disrespect. Celebrate the differences. It's diversity. They're good. And establish uh, common rituals, uh, like as if I if I sell a, mount, a certain amount of cars, then I come in and I, I ring the bell. So things like that. Uh, and then last but not least, uh, additional discussion questions. Think of the most cohesive group you've ever been in. What factors made this group so close? What are some challenges you see on creating a cohesive group? And uh, how does this time, uh, how does this team size, uh, how does team size affect cohesion? So that's it for chapter 12. Uh, hopefully you guys have a good day and a great week. Like I said, three more chapters and you're out of here.